Chapter 7, Section 5 Up until now, we've learned how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find an antiderivative of a derivative function. We've been given f prime of x, and we've been asked to find f of b minus f of a. This section tells us how to find f of b if f of a and f prime of x are known. We will observe how this is accomplished numerically and how it can be interpreted graphically. Remember, the fundamental theorem of calculus says the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx equals the antiderivative at b minus the antiderivative at a. Our goal here is to find f of b, so we can rearrange the fundamental theorem a little bit by adding the f of a term over to the other side. And it tells us that f of b will be equal to f of a, so the antiderivative at our starting point, plus the area under the curve from a to b of the derivative function. Suppose that we're told that f prime of x equals 2.1 to the x, and that f of a, which will be f of 0 for us, we're going to start at 0, will be equal to 1. So now we can find various values for f of b using our rearranged fundamental theorem of calculus. And we'll look at this when b equals 0, b equals 0.5, b equals 1, and b equals 1.5. Remember, f of b equals f of a plus the integral from a to b, f prime of x dx. So let's start with f of 0. So now we know that it'll equal f of a, which we said was equal to 1, plus the integral from 0 to 0, because that's our new b value, of this integral here. If you integrate something over the same bounds, 0 to 0, it has no area. So if you put this in your calculator, it'll be 0. 0 plus 1 equals 1. If we want to evaluate when b equals 0.5, again that'll equal f of 0, our starting point, which was 1, plus now the integral from 0 to 0.5 of 2.1 to the x dx. You'll put this integral in your calculator and add 1, and we'll get a value of 1.605. If b equals 1, again we're doing f of a, which was 1, Okay, because a was 0, that's our starting point. Integral from 0 to 1, 2.1 to the x dx. Again, you'll put this part of the integral into your calculator, add 1. So now we know that our f of 1 is 2.483. And when b equals 1.5, again, now we're looking at the integral from 0 to 1.5. f of 0 was 1, plus the integral from 0 to 1.5, 2.1 to the x dx put the integral in your calculator and add 1, and we get that f of 1.5 is 3.754. So again, if you're trying to solve for f of b numerically, you're just going to do f of a, which will be given, plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx, which is what we've been doing before. Numerically is pretty straightforward, but we want to know what's going on graphically. Okay? If we plot the point of what we just did, with b for different values, we can see what b is doing graphically. What do these values tell us about the derivative? Well, when we look at these graphs, it's going to help us understand how to calculate these things also graphically. In addition, we want to know how to calculate f of b both graphically and numerically. Graphically is a little more tricky. Okay, let's look at a graph and look at an example. Suppose we have the graph of f prime of x, given below. You can see it's just sort of a straight line and then a downward sloping line that goes through 2. And we're told that f of 0 equals 0. So the antiderivative of this function at 0 is 0. How do we determine b when b equals 1, b equals 2, and b equals 3? So remember our formula for finding f of b. f of b is f of a, which we know is going to be 0 here plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. So that means we're looking for the area under the curve from 0 up until different values of b. Okay, so if f of 0 equals 0, we assume that our original function starts at 0. By observing the graph above, we want to determine the area of any interval between a and b. These two critical components will help us solve for b. So, since we're going to be looking at 1, 2, and 3, that's how we want to divide this up. 1, 
2, and 3. Notice that we have different areas. A will represent the area from 0 to 1, B will represent the area from 1 to 2, and C will be from 2 to 3. So here, if we start with just the general areas, A is going to have an area of 1 because again, you can see that this is a rectangle, and graphically, we're going to do base times height. 1 times 1 is 1, which means the integral from 0 to 1 is 1. When we calculate the area of B, it's a triangle. So we're going to do 1 half base times height. So here, the base is 1 unit long, and the height is 1 unit long, so we have 1 half times 1 times 1, which is just 1 half, or 0.5. So that tells us the integral from 1 to 2 has an area of 0.5. For C, again we're going to do the area of a triangle, 1 half base times height, so from 2 to 3 is 1 unit long, 1 unit high, 1 half base times height is 0.5. Now we need to remember that since C is below the x-axis, we're going to count that area as negative when we do our calculations. So now that we know each of these areas, we can find the value of f of b for values of b of 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so up at the top, notice that I've rewritten the integral areas we calculated here, and we're going to count c as negative, so we'll write this as negative 0.5, so we remember that it was below the graph. So we'll start with f of 1. For f of 1, we're going to do f of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1, f prime of x dx. f of 1, okay, is going to be 0, which is our f of 0, plus the area of this rectangle here that we calculated, which was 1, so that's 1. To find f of 2, we can do f of 2 equals f of 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2. Since f of 1 will already count the area of a, that first rectangle, we don't need to double count it. We just need to add on that second triangle that we had there. So f of 1, which we just calculated, was 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2, that was our little triangle for b, it was positive, so we add on that 0.5, so that tells us that the value of f of 2 is 1.5. For f of 3, we can use the previous value of f of 2, that calculated everything in the rectangle plus everything in the first triangle, plus the integral from 2 to 3, that extra little piece of c, and remember that was below the x-axis, so that's why we're going to count this negative area. So f of 3 is going to be 1.5, which was our f of 2 value, plus the value of this integral, which was negative 0.5, so when we subtract it, we get a total area of 1, so f of 3 equals 1. Okay, what if we have something that's not linear? Well, generally, if you have something that's more curved or parabolic, then the areas will be given to you. Let's look at this example here. Area A, we'll tell you, has an area of 2, area B of 10, area C of 4. Remember, anything below we're going to have to count as negative. So if I tell you that f of 0 equals 5, we want to find the values of f of 0.3, which is our first intersection point here, f of 2, our second intersection point, and f of 3, the entire graph. And we also want to talk about what these points represent on a graph of f of x. We've talked about this before in Calculus 1, but we'll review it here. Remember, this is the graph of f prime of x. Okay, f of 0 equals 5. That was our starting point. The area a was negative 2, b was 10, and area c was negative 4. Recall, f of b equals f of a plus the integral from a to b, f prime of x dx. So to find f of 0 0.3, we're going to do f of 0, our starting point, plus the integral from 0 to 0.3, f prime of x dx. So f of 0 was given to us, we're told that's 5, and the integral from 0 to 0.3, if we go back and look at our graph, was this first area here, this area A, okay, which we said was 2. So we have 5, our initial value, plus negative 2, we make it negative because it was below, gives us a final value for f of 0.3 of positive 3. If we want to find f of 2, we're going to do f of 0.3, 
which takes into account that first area we just did, which we said was 3, which we found in the first part, plus the next area, which is the area from point 0.3 to 2. That was our area B. Let's go back and look at the graph for a moment. So from point 0.3 to 2, we're going to gain another area of 10. This time it will be positive because it's above. So f of 2 will equal 3, which was our f of point 0.3, plus 10, which gives us a final value for f of 2 of 13. For f of 3, we're now going to use f of 2 to, to consider everything we've already counted, plus the area from 2 to 3, which was that c area, and if we look back at our graph, we remember that that area we count as negative 4 was 13, plus negative 4 gives us a final value of f of 3 equal to 9. So now we have values for f of 0.3, f of 2, and f of 3. We want to remind you now what these different points represent. When you have the graph of a derivative, f prime of x, we know that when the graph crosses through the x-axis, something significant happens. We have these critical points because our first derivative equals 0. So again, let's remember what these critical points represent. f of point 0.3, the point of point 0.3, is going to be a local minimum because our derivative goes from negative to positive. If the derivative goes from negative to positive, you have a local minimum. At 2, again, we look at what's going on here. We're going to go from positive to negative. So if we go from positive to negative, we're going to have a local maximum. So then, here at 3, we start at negative, and we're going to assume it goes positive. Now what happens here is that since we're subtracting area from the maximum, we know we're going back down.